All right. Folks, welcome back. Jimmy O Show here live from, well, I guess it's not live, but from Tulane's campus. Uh, we're in the middle of fall camp. We're here with Shay Wyatt, senior wide receiver for the Green Wave. Shay, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. Uh, we're in the middle of camp, which is why we're we're recording here. We figured instead of asking these guys to come out to our normal studios out in Harahan, we, we, we'll, or River Road, Jefferson, I guess, um, come to y'all. So, um Today, we just had a first, I guess the first scrimmage, sort of scrimmage. It wasn't a full scrimmage, but had officials out. How'd you feel it went, Jay? Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, it was the first time that we went live, um, full pads. I thought it went pretty well. You know, we were pretty efficient uh, offensive-wise. And then defense, you know, they were making plays also. So I think we're in good hands, you know, going into the season so far. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, Shay, how, how has camp been so far in terms of just um, – I guess your impressions in terms of uh, how guys are picking up. We've got a new offense. We'll get into that. But new offense, uh, weather, injuries, just the whole deal. How, how's it been as a camp so far? Yeah, man. Uh, so this is my second year going in. Um, this camp has been tremendously better um, just because, not only because our bodies are a lot healthier, but, uh, you know, I think also the weather. The weather hasn't been as hot. It's been humid, obviously. But other than that, um, like I said, you know, like our strength coaches, they're taking care of us. People are feeling more energized, they're more fulfilled. We have a lot more energy when we're out on the field. So I, th I think just genuinely, like around the whole team, you know, we're, we're making really good strides. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, it's been 25 years or whatever, and I'm just always amazed by how much more attuned you guys are to what you need to do to take care of yourself. You came in here holding your gallon jug of water, staying <laughs> hydrated, right? Well, hey, I can't go anywhere without it. Yeah, and you mentioned the humidity. Of course, for those that don't know, Shay, you're you're not uh, you're not like a lot of the other guys. You're not a Southerner by trade. You know, you're 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 from. Are you from Missouri originally? I'm from Nebraska, actually. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, born and raised in Nebraska, and then uh, you, you played your first few years uh, Division Two All American, I believe, at Central Missouri, right? Yes, sir. Yep. And at Central Missouri, you, you, you're familiar with our offense coordinator here because he was your head coach? Yes, sir, he was. And, <laughs> and, uh, and Coach McMenamin, was he your receivers coach or was he the offensive coordinator? What was his position? Uh, coach Mack was actually the OC. Okay. And so Coach Mack, I was talking to him at lunch uh, before, we, before we were recording. He, wanted to, he, he said I needed to be sure to ask you who is better one-on-one -on -one in basketball between you and him. Between me and him? Oh, that's not a question. I would bury him. <laughs> he, he knows this. Yeah. He knows this. So he was sharing that you were, uh, I guess he fancies himself a little bit of a basketball player. He's got some height, right? But mm -hmm. you were, uh, he thought, he says when they were recruiting you to Central Missouri, they didn't think they were going to get you because they thought you were going to be a D1 basketball guy. Mm -hmm. So that was basketball your first love, football your first love? How well, was that? Well, yeah, so basketball is my first love. My dad played in um, college all throughout high school and everything. So when I was growing up, I was always in the gym with him. He was a basketball coach, so wherever he went, I was there. I always had a ball. And then, uh, yeah, Coach Mack was right. Coach Mack actually only saw me once in high school. He came up to, the, to my high school, talked to me, and then I didn't speak to him until late spring of that year. And, uh, you know, like he said, they didn't know whether I was going to play basketball or football, and I didn't really know either. I was just mm. trying to, you know, weigh my options or whatnot. And uh, it's actually because of this one kid, I'm going to shout him out. His name's Jordan Flowers. Uh, Coach Mack and Coach Bowden know, know who that is. Um, I was actually at a, another school doing a visit. It was my official visit at Missouri Western. I had no official visit set up for Central Missouri at all. Uh, it was a Saturday night, and my boy Jordan called me up. He had already committed to UCM. And uh, he said, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, well, I'm going to go back home to Omaha. You know, I'm, I'm up here at Missouri Western. And he's like, well, Coach Mack is asking about you. He wants to know if you'll come up and do a visit. And I was like, you know what, why not? It's only two hours away. And also another fun fact, Missouri Western is where the Chiefs have their training okay. camp. Right? So, you know, the facilities are phenomenal up there. Um, it just didn't sit right with me. That's why I didn't commit to them. So that following Sunday morning, I told the coach, I said, uh, I'm not really feeling it. Um, me and my mom made my way to UCM. And I uh, kid you not, it was just me, Boda, Coach Boda, and Coach Mack, and myself and my mother. And they took me around campus. It just felt like home. And uh, on that day, I committed. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not normally how it goes. It's you know? not normally how it goes at all. Yeah, particularly when you're competing against, like you said, you know, uh, and we I, I'll get into it here, but I'm familiar with what you're talking about. Like, when you have an NFL team that camps at that place, like, I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking about top of the line. 
facility. Yeah. I mean, I, I dare say no D2 team probably has facilities like the one you turned down. Not at all, yeah. honestly. Yeah, we, uh, and so I, I, when we, when I was here on campus, the Super Bowl um, was played here, and the Patriots, it was the Patriots Packers, and the Patriots practiced at Tulane, oh, okay. and they used our locker room and everything else. It was Bledsoe and those guys, and it was right before uh, break. And, uh, I mean, what they came in and did, this wasn't here. This is what The stadium wasn't here. It was our practice field. They came in and completely redid the entire practice field just for these guys to practice for a week, Man. you know, and, like, redid, refitted weight, uh, different parts of their turf and did redid some of the locker room, all, all for an NFL team to come in for one mm-hmm. week. Yeah. So I imagine if it was a place where they camp, uh, it's a little bit even sweeter. Yeah. Um, so that's cool, man. Well, um, so Omaha, right? Huh? Yeah, Omaha, Nebraska. Tulane's got some some fond memories of Omaha. Baseball team's been to the World Series a couple times. Did you ever go out and watch the World Series? Yeah, right so my mom would always get uh, general admission tickets. So um, that's always a good time because you got an uh, abundance of people coming from wherever in the country, you know, just to go to support their teams. And uh, like I said, it's just a good time going to the College World Series and then also the zoo. Mm-hmm. Um, I always like to brag about the zoo. We're top three in the nation, and it's it's always a good time to, to yeah. go check it out. Yeah, I've sure. heard it almost. I mean, so I, I went up there. I guess it was the old five World Series I came in. We were number one in the nation. And, I mean, it was such a part. I mean, Omaha – is the perfect town for hosting that event because yeah. like you say everybody comes in but I mean it's so alive I mean we're used to New Orleans nightlife but I'm going to tell you when you're there for the College World Series those that o- o- that Omaha area like that downtown area mm-hmm. is like it's it's like a cleaner version of Bourbon Street yeah it just brightens up you know yeah. I, I love it though it's a it's a nice nice city especially a, a place where you can just grow up and uh, you know be yourself honestly mm-hmm. yeah you know and I will give Bradley's team a shout out you know we <laughs> LSU had set such a tradition there before we got there. They're like, oh man, y'all from Louisiana? They're thinking we're going to come in. Yeah. Like Tulane brought big numbers, but they thought we were coming in with LSU type numbers and <laughs> take over the bars. Like, man, we we just not built that way. <laughs> we're not we're not ready to uh, give all your bars of record years and uh, performance <laughs> sales. Um, so anyway, well, look, so. Y'all had a lot of success with Coach Boda, Coach Mac uh, at Central Missouri. Shay, I think you were, uh, like I mentioned, you were All American your last year there. Yes, sir. Um, and then was fourteen hundred yards, something like that. Yep, fourteen hundred yards, and I think sixty receptions, something like that. Yeah. So, and and when you think about it, a lot of guys with fourteen hundred, like they catch a ton of bubbles and all this stuff, they mm-hmm. they get 80, 90 catches. But you did it on six. I mean, you're running. Yeah. You're running all the more complex set of routes, I take it. I'm yeah. Deeper and, patterns. And like we, uh, we were talking before we started this podcast, um, you know, Coach Boda and Coach Mack, they'll put us in positions to where we can get open. So um, whether I'm in the boundary or if I'm to the field, they know my strength. So they know that, um, say, if it's third and long, they love running a concept where it's a dig, you know. And that's right across the field. I caught a lot of those when I was at UCM. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, like, when a – defensive team sees that it's third and long they're not going to blitz they're usually going to drop three or drop four and uh, that just opens up pockets in the zone for us to fill in and that's what coach Boda and coach Mack do so well they can uh, depict what the defense is going to do before even we're out there so behind the scenes they're great like they're Mm -hmm. geniuses like I, I, I cannot lie about that yeah, and I noticed, you know, a little bit I've been out of practice. Coach Mack, you know, is super nice of a guy. He is off the field. You know, he gets out, mm-hmm. he gets after it a little bit yeah. on the field. Yeah, I mean, I got genuine love for Coach Mack. And even on the, on the field, you know, I love how he coaches. You know, it's never, it's never like tear you down or make you feel mm-hmm. some type of way or, or where you lose confidence. It's always, hey, I expect better from you, you know, and I'm going to coach you up. And it's going to be hard sometimes, and that's how it should be. And uh, actually, like, I have an example, like Chris, uh, you know, a young fawn that's growing up in this uh, this uh, program. Chris Brazil. Yeah, Chris Brazil. Yep. Brazil, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he had messed up on a play, and, like, we all thought he was just going to rat him out, you know, just yell at him. But he didn't even do that. You know, he just took him over to the side, explained to him what to do, and, you know, Chris – went on and he had a great practice that day so that's that's just little stuff that like coaches can do just to you know build that relationship with their players to make it more genuine to make it more real and uh, they definitely have that for sure Mm -hmm. you know speaking of Chris too he kind of jumped off as a guy to me as like whoa you know because he was I know coach was coach Fritz was really high on him he had coached his father Mm -hmm. and had a lot of good things to say about him but he was you know more of an under recruited guy but like which you see him out here it's like how's that possible I mean he's oh man I mean he's 6'3 to you know 200 or so 
and he's got weight to put on, mm-hmm. right? But he's already a big physical receiver and just a lot, created a lot of separation out here. I was really impressed with that. And, I, you know, he's only touching, you know, scratching the surface of what he can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, barely even touching it. I mean, we're probably, what, day nine into camp, and I've already seen some things that he's done, and I'm like, man, he's going to be special, mm-hmm. especially when he gets his feet under him. Um, when he learns how to just – control his body a little bit more, but he, he's going to be a special player for sure. Yeah, it looks like, you know, somebody, we tried a number of deep shots, maybe picking a ball a little bit earlier, things like that. But yeah. he, he, once he gets it, yeah. he's going to be something. You know, another guy jumped out on a nice play, and, and Carson made a great throw. I thought I was really impressed mm-hmm. by Carson Haggard, but um, the freshman tight end, 88, um, help me with the name here. The, uh, uh, it's a young okay. tight end. It's one of the freshman tight ends. There's two of them, and it, uh, it was 88. I'm, I'm embarrassed for not knowing the name, but uh, me too. <laughs> real hard. Uh, contested catch. Uh, I mean, you know, it was it was the rookies, you know, against each other. But he did make a catch in traffic. Shows some good skills with ball in the air. Um, but you know, overall, I thought you know, unlike years past. Tyler Helm. Hmm? Tyler Helm. Tyler Helm. No. No, that's a old, that's a older. Old. Yeah, yeah. Good try, good try, Mr. Producer. <laughs> Tyler's a mortgage broker. Uh, I know Tyler. Um, but um, you know his uh, so. Uh, but, you know, overall, I thought, you know, offensive line looked like they, they were working together a little better than what we saw in years past. Um, you know, the backfields are so loaded. You know, man, man, just, man, just create a crease for these guys, yeah. huh? Yeah, and it's like Tajay, you got Cam, uh, Shad, you got Iverson, even Makai back there. I mean, like you had mentioned, you know, the O line, I think their schemes are a lot more simpler than last year. So mm-hmm. they're just able to line up, make a call, and then they can just go. And then for the backs, you know, they don't really need much room to, to pop off. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see them them go after, you know, like our receiving core, we're, we're pretty adamant on blocking for them because they block for us. You know, like sometimes they have to take a hit from a linebacker that's rushing just just for us to get open. So, I mean, it, it's just, like there's just genuine love all around the team, you know. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how the backfield does and uh, – just honestly overall for the team as well. Yeah, you know, that, that was sort of the special sauce, I think, back for us in 98 was the downfield block. Like, you know, I'd love to take all the credit, but really the, the way our receivers block for our running backs and our running backs block for our receivers, that's what sort of made the 10-yard plays into 30- and 40-yard mm-hmm. plays. And I saw some of that today. Iverson, you mentioned him. It was a crosser. I think it was Lawrence Keyes catches it well short of the sticks. He's eight, nine yards short of six. Iverson – Total hustle play comes up, yep. pins the safety, gives him the edge, and then Lawrence picks up the first down. Yep, and that th- those are winning plays. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, we you talk know. about those, and uh, you know, Iverson's going to be a good back. And then obviously, like we had mentioned, Keys. Um, like I like I said, those plays, you know, like those are the ones that'll set us apart, especially like in the fourth quarter when we need it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was really impressed. I just, you know, the the amount of hustle, enthusiasm, support for each other. I mean, there's just there's a lot of that intangible stuff I'm seeing out of you guys that you see with good teams. Been around good teams. I've been around bad teams. You got a lot of those tendencies. And, and, and I mean, it's a credit to Coach Staff, but it's credit to, you know, the senior leaders and the captains mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, I mean, I think after – it was during the spring, you know, after the season, we uh, – the seniors just kind of got together, kind of said this is our last year. What do we want to do with it? You know, it's our team. And uh, I remember we had a team meeting, and uh, Nick had uh, promoted it. And uh, he pretty much just laid it down, laid down the foundation that, uh, you know, AAC championship is the standard, you know. Like, we've been saying that we've been preaching it ever since the season ended last year. So, I mean, it's been ingrained in our brains that, uh, that that's what we want to shoot for. You know, they say shoot for the stars, but, like, we want to shoot beyond that. You know, maybe fall down with the championship and go to a bowl. Like, we want to go past that and, and uh, exceed expectations that are already there. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and it's it's a pretty thing to watch, and it's a fun thing to be a part of, and it's been a privilege to be close to you guys because I feel, really feel like y'all are on the verge of something, and so being around and seeing it it's and exposing my kid to it, I mean, you know, you just don't get those opportunities every time in life, and, and I love watching it. But I want to talk about you. Uh, sort of last year, what you what I saw out of you, and you can tell if I, you, you see it or don't see it, you know, what immediately struck me was, like, watching the Oklahoma game, okay? I'm, I'm – Watch it like a guy's come highly productive, but it was D2. You know, how's he going to do against, you know, these are guys who were in the playoff last year, yep. right? How's he going to, and, and how he's going to perform against them? And what I saw was like, you have this easy separation ability. It's kind of like, you know, when you watch Amari Cooper or you watch um, Devontae Smith. Mm-hmm. 
like you don't actually realize that they're moving really fast yeah. all the time because yep. it's just an easy movement but they're they're moving and next thing you know there's separation right mm-hmm. do you do you see those as some of the guys that are sort of your game's pattern after or is it somebody else How, who do you see as, as an yeah, example um you know i look at a multiple receivers i really like to look at keenan allen um yeah that's another good one yeah me and Ke- me and keenan resemble just because a lot of stuff that he does on the field he incorporates like how you could do it on the basketball field so i mean if you look at my releases it's really a crossover or even like I'm going between the legs, and then when I'm running my my routes, it's more so about um, how I can get this defender to think I'm going one way mm. and I'm really going the other. So it's really like a chess match within the game. So I mean, I, my teammates will say it all the time. You know, they call me slow, but I say I got sneaky speed. You know, <laughs> like if you give me a, a inch, like I'm gonna take a mile. You know, it's just it's sure. just given. But uh, I mean, other than that, like I, I love watching the releases, especially like Devonte Adams. He's He's goaded for sure, you know, like he just you, you really can't make any errors about him Especially in the NFL like the room for error is so small mm. and he knows how to capitalize off all of that so I mean trying to uh, Model my game after those guys, you know, just watching film off of them um, I think it has helped me especially like with last year like the OU game like how you were mentioning mentioning how you know I was a D2 player and uh, going into that game like I'm not gonna lie, I was I was nervous. Obviously, mm-hmm. like seeing TNT, the ESPN, all the cameras and everything. And uh, this is true. This is a true story. I remember I was out on the field and uh, like I was shaking in my boots a little bit. You know, like I've never played in front of that many people. And uh, I remember my sister, her husband, and her kids came down to the front row, and my nephew had said my name. And after that, I was fine. I was mm-hmm. like, I've been here before. I've played football nice. before. And there's 100 yards. You know, it's the same football field. It's just a different platform. So yeah. it was six, yeah. six for 60, I think, that game. Something like Made that. Made every catch, you know? every catch out there. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, well, so and in, in, we had talked about your basketball, but I think you were like a 30 point a game score or something. Oh man, not that many, but I was 22. It was okay, 22 okay. In, high in high school, that's pretty good. Yeah, I was putting up numbers in high school. Yeah, uh, yeah. You space that out to college and pro. That's, that's you get yeah, into the close. I, I played one year at UCM too. Um, started a couple games. I think I averaged like five points. But uh, after it was after we won our conference game in 2019, actually, um, I had talked to Coach Boda if I could play, and he was like, "Yeah, go ahead, shoot for it." And I was intentionally, I was going to play my freshman year, like all, all four years that I was there. But Coach Bodo wanted me to get acclimated to the football of uh, physicality. And I was like, okay, that's fair. And then after the season, my body felt fine. Um, and I had been doing dual sports since I was little. Mm-hmm. So I was used to it. And, uh, you know, like, like I said, basketball's always been a part of me. But, you know, since I came here, they, they keep me off the court as much <laughs> as possible. <laughs> yeah, I know Coach Fritz is a little leery of guys getting on the court, get hurt. You know, yeah. it happens. Um, so let's talk a little bit off the field. You know, um, where are you? Have you already graduated? Um, you were a grad transfer when yes, you came so, in. Right? Yeah. So I graduated from UCM with my psychology degree and a minor in chemistry. Okay. And then um, I'm in the master's field right now for industrial hygiene here at Tulane. If you don't know what that is, it's just practically OSHA. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah absolutely. Personal, or not personal, but like, you know, safety protection. Yeah, I was uh, my first, I, my first, I'm a lawyer, and my first few years on the job was dealing with, I had the expert, I, industrial hygiene experts. Yeah. Because it was asbestos cases and stuff, mm-hmm. it was like what the standard was back when for using it, getting rid of it. And all yeah, that we're the stuff. bad guys. Yeah, no, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, no, there was a good guy, there was a good local guy named Danny Joyce, he was a good guy to have on, on your side, but, yeah. um, but yeah, so I'm familiar with that. That's cool. Uh, and and I, I have a, one of my best friends. I was in his wedding. He's an industrial hygienist up in Shreveport. And so I, I know you guys. Oh, yeah. So yeah. You, you got you got all sorts of opportunities available to you when sports are over, whenever that is. Um, so that's cool, man. Well, Shay, like, uh, so it's normally, you know, we, we always talk about food here. That's that's sort of the way we kind of get to wrapping up. The uh, Normally, though, I'm talking to guys from Texas. I'm talking to guys from Louisiana. I'm talking to guys from Mississippi. I'm talking... Uh, Omaha guys. Yeah. So I gotta imagine the background is the steak, right? I mean, is steak that is, is that the way to go? Yeah. Um, you know the Omaha beef mm-hmm. or anything. You know, like there's a lot of steaks up there, but uh, really the the stamp on the brass is probably Runza. I don't know if you've heard of that. No. Uh-uh. It's like a hamburger, but inside of a bun. So it's like a roll. You put meat, cheese, lettuce, or whatever you want in, in, into it. Um, I'm not really a big fan of it, but if you go up there, um, you got runs popped up everywhere. Right. 
So what? But what at and why at home growing up? What was your favorite sort of go to favorite meal? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was a cereal guy. <laughs> I was I was a cereal pop tart type of guy. You know, I I love my sweets. But uh, if I had to go for a meal, um, I, I was a really big fan of pork chops, mashed potatoes, uh, mac and cheese. Uh, I'm a big fan of my greens. Like as a kid, I never had a problem with my veggies. So I, I love broccoli, asparagus. Um, you know, r- really just soul food. You know, my mom could really throw it down in the kitchen. Now, was she a Midwestern by the native, or was she? Yeah, so my mom was uh, in the military, so she moved around a lot. She was born in Florida. She lived overseas for a little bit with my grandpa. Um, and I was actually born in Minot. So we were sta- they were stationed there for a little bit, and I lived there for about 13 years. And uh, it's Is called... North Dakotas? Uh, yeah, North Dakota. North Dakota. Why not North Dakota, yeah. So it was about 200 miles from Canada. Real cold. Um, not really much to do up there, but um, I, I got the experience of living in a small town. And uh, I think that also influenced why I wanted to go to UCM. Because, you know, it was a close-knit community town, you know. Like, there wasn't too much going on to where I could get lost in the crowd or anything. But, uh, you know, growing up, like, food was always... I've always been a foodie, for right. sure. So, so, so then you came to the foodie town. So, what, what, what is it in New Orleans? What, what's been the best thing you've had in New Orleans? What's your favorite thing down? Oh man, uh, Neal's oysters, the oh, garlic, yeah. the okay. garlic oysters. I had never had oysters until I got down here, and uh, I was one of the first restaurants that I went to. And man, I, I get them every every time I go out now. Um, Neal's is good. I like Katie's. Um, there's a lot of places off of. Uh, what is it, the Riverfront, I believe, mm-hmm. by UNO, maybe? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple places out there that I like to go. And then, of course, uh, the wing spot that's right across the street. Bayou Wings. Bayou Wings, yeah. Oh, like man, too. the lemon pepper wings out of this world. Henry, <laughs> my uh, <laughs> son, Henry's a big world. man. So, uh, but look, you know, Adonis moved in. You know, we got to, gotta, y'all got to go down there, Highway 90. You got to go check out Mosca's closer to his neck of the woods now. That's, that'll, you'll need a nap after. But, yeah, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> probably it's, shouldn't go there. Yeah, y'all yeah. gotta go check out some Moscas. But um, that, I was, I saw him, so it made me think of it. But look, man, you can't go wrong in so many places. Mm-hmm. Well, but look, man, look, I'm looking forward to watching you play next year. I'm looking forward to all the guys, really. And like I said, I, I feel like we're on the verge of something special. I appreciate you. Well, yeah, I appreciate coming you out, having man. me on the on the podcast. Yeah, man. Well, special. Well, welcome, buddy. And so that'll do it uh, for this episode of of the Jimmy O Show, folks. Y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all keep. Tune in, keep subscribing, YouTube, uh, your favorite podcast network. Thank you to Bradley Schneller for producing this episode. And until next time, roll wave.